So today's poem is The Emigre by Carol Rumans. As normal, we're going to put our language notes in the pink highlighted section and any structural notes will go in red, in yellow, sorry. Starting off then, this poem explores the memory of the poet and their experiences in a far off city they spent time in as a child. The poet or the narrator is looking at this city through the eyes of a child and the happy memories that she had. She compares these to the truths that she knows as an adult, which is much harder. Emigre relates to the world uh, relates to the word emigrate, the idea that a person goes and settles in another country, sometimes not feeling welcome to return to their original country. And the poet here bases many of her ideas on the modern examples of emigration from countries, like from Russia or from the Middle East, where people are fleeing corruption and tyranny, even now as we speak. Or whether those countries change, and while those people are fleeing, those countries change in their absence, possibly to some form of dictatorship. Carol Rumans is an English poet, she's a lecturer, and she's a translator. She's had over 15 collections of poetry published, as well as several novels and several plays. The Emigre was written in 1993, and it was in the collection called Thinking of Skins. Starting off then, we go straight away in with a structural note. We have this idea that the, the speaker's memory of the city grows and solidifies as the poem moves on, and this is in, enhanced by the structure of the poem. So the first note would be, the opening makes it sound like a story, but the fact that we have the past tense, there once was a country, gives this sense of loss, so that it is story-like, but suggests loss. I left it as a child, but my memory of it is sunlight clear. And we have this positive image coming through now, suggesting that the memories are not only clear in her head, but they're also positive and happy memories. So this fits in the semantic field. One of the semantic fields in this poem is imagery about light. And we have a lot of light imagery throughout here. When we have things about sunlight clear, November, time of the year when it's dark, the bright filled paperweight, I am branded by an impression of sunlight at the end of the first stanza, the white streets that glow. Then we have this child vocabulary. And that's also not necessarily about light, but it's also about positivity. We have every coloured molecule, it tastes of sunlight. And it's interesting that most of that light imagery is in the first two stanzas. And when I personally look through this, I can only really find one example of light imagery, and it's actually contrasting where we have dark. We have that image where this, the speaker is being accused of being dark in her current sitting. It's almost contrasting this section with the previous two. We'll come back to that more later on, but it might be worth making a note I'll put here of a semantic field of light. Looking down onto the line three, for it seems I never saw that in November, and it seems, and then I am told. So we've got the two things here. It seems I am told that suggests she that suggests that there is another voice. Telling her about her past. And again, this links to this idea of the first person in the form contrasting with this extra voice. And it's a nice contrast for us to see. So it comes to the mildest city, the worst news I receive of it cannot break my original view. The bright-filled paperweight. And here we have a lovely metaphor 
talking about that bright filled paperweight, suggesting that there are bright and happy memories. Notice that when we're thinking about the memories so far, we've had positive and clear memories. Now we're having bright and happy memories. It suggests a childlike innocent all, innocence almost that while she was in the city where all these horrible things were going on, that she only saw the good things. Um, as well as the bright and happy memories, it also suggests, because it's a paperweight, suggests that the memories, in a way that they're almost solid, and fixed that they can't be changed it may be at war it may be sick with tyrants and now we get this contrast with this bright positive imagery and now we get this contrasting image of the and using the language of conflict we're suddenly starting to get some of this war vocabulary this conflict based vocabulary um throughout so using that imagery of conflict, we have this, the association with war and invasion that comes through in her memories. Um, the way I'd write this would suggest that her homeland has been invaded. So it gives us this, this idea that her positive view, so the positive memories that she has is inaccurate. For me, this poem is all about the growing up as well. And don't forget, we've got the structure and the form of this poem in three large blocks, suggesting that almost monolithic nature that power being exerted over somebody else. She was a child forced to move by somebody else. She didn't make this decision. Looking at the last line of the stanza, and another note to make about the language used here, but this is going back to that light imagery. And it's an interesting sandwich that we've got here at the end where we have the light imagery, the conflict imagery, followed by the light imagery again. But we have this branded so we have this juxtaposition where the positive impression of sunlight is juxtaposed with branded. It suggests this permanence to a view. So we have a juxtaposition of branded and the positive. So I'm just doing a plus sign followed by a VE to give that positive sign. And if you look at that, the next stanza then, the white streets of that city, the graceful slopes glow. And we have this idea now where the city suddenly sounds heavenly. So the white the white streets that the glow. And even clearer as time rolls its tanks. And now we have this, that time is personified as an enemy. That to me suggests that if she is so against this idea of time, that time, as time rolls its tanks, that she doesn't like the idea of time passing. It suggests to me that growing up has been hard work for her. And the frontiers rise between us. Who's the us? Who are they? Who is she being separated from? We don't know. We don't find out. But we have this close like waves. Now, although this was written nearly 30 years ago, it was written 28 years ago, we still have that image from about four or five years ago of the Syrian refugees of the father carrying his dead son out of the water after his son had drowned. So we still have, even 20 years after this poem was written possibly, we still have this imagery of the refugees drowning, the refugees being surrounded by water. 
and follow it like almost to contrast that we have this child's vocabulary and it seems to refer to the language of her childhood it's a metaphor that makes the language again seem almost precious I carried here, that child's vocabulary I carried here like a hollow doll and that's an interesting idea, this hollow doll that it, that she's been told something else so it's not what it seems. So this idea that she's been told, oh maybe she's been told, oh yes we're just going on holiday, something like that. but. She's been given this idea uh, to believe that she's worked out later on, isn't uh, The hollow doll opens and spills a grammar. Soon I shall have every coloured molecule of it. And again, that links to that child's vocabulary, that every coloured molecule, the language being bright and precious. It also suggests this almost sanctity of knowledge. We have here as well... Um, as well as the every colour molecule, we also have further down another link back to this bright and precious vocabulary. But we'll come back to that later. Um, finishing off this stanza, we have the it tastes of sunlight. So we have this bright imagery again, again, coming back to this semantic field of light. So another sense... makes it more vivid. I have no passport, there's no way back at all, but my city comes to me in its own white plane. What's interesting with this structure is I have no passport, there's no way back at all. So if we look up here, the structurally, the opening of the, the poem, the structural opening of the poem was story-like and suggesting loss. Here we have this another mood change, almost a volta, um, suddenly she's all the positive memories uh, she said there's something something's happening the worst news still good oh I remember my city it's all wonderful and then we start to get these hints that something's not right you know it may now be a lie banned by the state etc etc and then we hit it hits us on the start of that third stanza I have no passport and there's no way back at all but my city comes back to me in its own white plane. And here, that, that white plane represents the speaker's memories. So looking at the first two lines here. So the first line of stanza sounds hopeless. So it's a hopeless to the final stanza contrasted by the second line and then looking at that second image the second line that we have there my city comes to me in its own white plane could represent the speaker's memories so we have the memories here in this in this phrase of the white plane it lies down in front of me docile as paper and I comb its hair and love its shining eyes. And we have this childlike description here in the personification. In fact, the personification is all through this section where she's personifying her city like, this, like a child playing with a pet. Looking down to line 21 then, my city takes me dancing through the city of walls. And that's a really interesting phrase there. The contrasting perceptions that, of the city that the speaker is in now, she sees it as restrictive, the city of walls. 
but they, the people, the people who live there, see it as a free city. So we have this contrasting perspective. City of walls, and then free city. And because we've got these contrasting perspectives, it suggests again that she doesn't fit in, or she doesn't feel like she fits in at the very least. They accuse me of absence, they circle me. They accuse me of being dark in their free city. They but a death, and my shadow falls as evidence of sunlight. So, we have some really dark ideas here, but it's very menacing. And we have, again, this language of conflict with they accuse me and they accuse me of being dark in their free city. We've got this repetition of they accuse. Who they are is unclear. But it's still menacing in its tone. My city hides behind me. So that's suggesting that her truth hides behind her. This idea of dark, they accuse me of being dark. Now she, you could argue in one way that she means they're accusing me of being evil. There is the racist connotations of this as well. So we have racial connotations here. We also have the suggestions here that it contrasts with, again, we have this sort of contrasts with her old, with her old city. Remember the, the vocabulary we had used earlier on to describe a city of the white streets that glow. Um, contrasts with her old city. Um, and just to finish off the poem then, a really nice sort of echoing. We have this evidence of sunlight where we have this finishing on a positive note. So despite the threats of the, this new city is still associated with sunlight, just as it is in the first two stanzas. So bright image, echoes the first two stanzas. So the themes in this poem, there's two key themes. The first one of those would be nostalgia. So nostalgia uh, is this positive belief that of, you have memories of something that are positive. Um, so for me, I would have these nostalgic memories of Newcastle winning football matches. Um, obviously, it's not current. They're clearly memories. And Newcastle don't seem to be able to win a game left, right or centre. But we have these positive memories. And for the speaker... It's the positive memories of her old city. So again, I'm just writing positive with a plus VE just to make our lives a little bit easier. So positive memories of old city. And then we follow up the nostalgia with threat. And there are suggestions that the city that she lived in were almost, it was invaded or taken over by a tyrant. But the speaker chooses to ignore the threat to focus on the positive. So the poems that I'd compare this to, so the last thing you're going to write after you've done your themes box, we need to write down the poems that we could compare this to. In your exam, you're going to be asked to compare the poems, so we have to focus on this. So you could compare the power of memory in here. Make sure I get this the right way around. So the power of memory and how it's unimpeachably positive. You could talk about kamikaze. You could also really interestingly contrast it with war photographer or remains. So I'll put remains on there because it's a really interesting contrast. How here we have someone clinging on to positive memories. And in remains we have someone whose memories are almost destroying them. 
You can also compare the experience of loss with poppies. So in this one, the speaker has lost her old city. In poppies, she loses a son. Um, you've also got the experience of place. So that how important a place is, that could link very nicely with the poem London. 